वेलकम इन दिस टॉपिक वी वुड अंडरस्टैंड सेल अ बेसिक फंडामेंटल यूनिट ऑफ लाइफ नाउ सेल इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंट ऑफ एनी लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म ओमन सेल्यूला ई सेल्यूला विच टॉक्स अबाउट द कॉन्सेप्ट द सेल इवॉल्व फ्रॉम अ प्री एग्जिस्टिंग सेल now all living beings are composed of this basic structure and functional unit and that is what is called as cell single celled uh, organisms are amoeba paramecium clymenomonas uh, so cell is basically a building block each cell has its own life span the concept says that cell originates from a pre existing cell they are capable of independent existence now cells come together to form tissues tissues come together to form organ organ comes together to form an organism this concept was first discovered in 1965 by robert hooke and the most important thing is on a dead skin we see that that dead skin removes and we have a new skin that means the old worn out cells are replaced by the new cells now how do we identify cell Hook first of all talked about the cock cells he observed these cock cells with microscope there were honeycomb like structures which were seen and these honeycomb like structures were observed as cell these were the dead cells found in the bark and then there was uh, the living content of the cell which was discovered this living content of the cell is what is known as the protoplast the simplest form of microscope was discovered by leuven hook and this was a tiny biconcave which was between the two brass plates and the magnification was around uh, 70 to 250 times later on light microscope which is also known as compound mi microscope was discovered here convex mirror is used for magnification and the magnification is much higher uh, the next is uh, modern complex microscope modern compound microscope or modern complex microscope has a magnification of nearly 1500 times and finally we do have optical microscopes uh, the modern complex microscopes which are optical in nature and after that we do have electron microscope which has a capability of magnification magnification of around 40000 to 2 lakh times it also has a capability of making virtual image when uh, the beam is focused between the electromagnets falling onto a, a fluorescent screen and thereby a virtual image could be formed also three dimensional images could be seen under an electron microscope so among the microscopes the simplest one was the one discovered by leuven hook after that we had the light or the compound microscope followed by modern complex microscope which is also the optical microscope followed by electron microscope the next is a very important concept and who propounded it is further important so sheridan and shavin gave the cell theory the four fundamental aspects of cell theory are important and it says that cell is the basic structural unit of life it says that the cell is the basic functional unit of life cell arises from the pre existing cell the concept given by wolderoff will show which says om omnis cellula e cellula cell is considered as a hereditary material so it is a unit of hereditary passing from one generation to another and all the organisms start their life as a single cell and thereby grow the complexity and we have uh, the multicellular organisms that is seen within the cell in the nucleus there is the dna or the rna even those which do not have nucleus do have the dna rna as a genetic material so hereditary material which is uh, you enclosed within the protein coat is found within the cell and therefore cell is responsible for hereditary information as well now this cell could be unicellular as we said amoeba clymenomonas yeast paramecium are examples of unicellular then we have multicellular so colonies of algae in the form of volvox volvox uh, human beings are examples of multicellular organisms if we talk about one of the smallest cell mycoplasma is the smallest cell with 0.1 to 0.15 micron it is believed that 10000 my mycoplasma in a row would be as wide as a human hair so you could understand how small or um, how Uh, minute mycoplasma is the longest cell is the nerve cell which is around 1 meter uh, ostrich cell is considered as one of the largest cell if if we talk about a newborn baby there are around 2 trillion cells in an adult there are 37.2 trillion cells so there is how the multiplication of the cells actually take place uh, there are various cells as we saw usually smaller in size now if we talk about 
I take a very simple example of one uh, piece of four centimeter. Okay, if I find out the surface area, it is around sixteen square centimeter. Uh, the next cube, I take two small, um, uh, I take two centimeter cubes, which are eight in number. Okay, so the combined surface area becomes thirty two square centimeters. This means that smaller the size, higher the surface area. So benefits of a smaller size. For a cell would be what? It would indicate better communication, better diffusion of the material, uh, more diffusion of the metabolic waste, and greater um, movement of the respiratory uh, products. And therefore, the smaller size of the cell is actually useful uh, in many forms. In the case that cell is damaged. Repair of the cell becomes easier because of its smaller size. So there are various benefits of a small size of the cell. Uh, if we talk about human WBC, it is amoebaid in shape. The RBC is circular and muscle cell is long and contractile. Uh, xylem has elongated and tubular cells for conduction process. Uh, in the stomata, guard cells are kidney shaped. So there are various other uh, forms of cells available in various shapes. That is again important. Some of the exceptions are important. Among the cells, as we have understood previously, prokaryoid and eukaryoid is one of the classifications. Prokaryoid, good examples are bacteria, cyanobacteria. They are unicellular. They do not have well-defined nucleus. Uh, the the DNA is present as it is. It is not enclosed. The single cellular uh, sin, sing, single circular uh, chromosome is present in the case of prokaryoid. However, in the case of eukaryoid, what happens is uh, the DNA is within the nucleus. It is both unicellular and multicellular. Uh, it is present in all the living organism. Uh, the nucleus is present. The DNA has the protein and the chromatin fiber. Ribosomes could be free or attached to the endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, the cell organelles are present in the case of eukaryotic cells. So that's a difference between prokaryote and eukaryote. Now coming on to the differences between animal cell and plant cell before we begin with the individual cell organelles and their importance. So plant cell does have a cell wall. In the case of plant cells, centrosomes are absent. Centrosomes are present in the case of animal cell. Cell wall is present in the case of plant cell, absent in the case of animal cell. There is a large vacuole which is present in the plant cell. In the case of animal cell, the vacuoles are small. Uh, then the most important thing is in the plant cell, lysosome is absent. Lysosome is absent. However, lysosome is present in the case of animal cell. In the plant cell, food is stored stored as starch. However, in the animal cell, it is in the form of glycogen. Uh, cell, uh, cytoplasma fills the entire space in the case of animal cell within which we have the various uh, uh, cell organelles which are seen. Uh, the nucleus is located in the center in the case of animal cell. However, nucleus is shifted towards the side because the vacuole occupies the predominant position in the case of plant cell. Another important thing a very important thing that we need to understand, very important question for your objective questions, which organelles within the cell are double membrane, which are single membrane and which do not have a cell membrane. So single membrane lysosome is a good example. One with no membrane is ribosome, centrosome, centrioles. Centrosomes again seen only in animal cells, very very important, these do not have any membrane. Lysosome has a single membrane. Mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum, plastids, vacuole, Golgi bodies, these are double membrane. Now, uh, coming on to the one very important thing is within the cell, we understand nucleus, we understand the cytoplasma. This cytoplasma along uh, is along with the nucleoplasma. So cytoplasma along with the nucleoplasma is what is known as protoplasm. Nucleoplasm is present within the nucleus. So nucleoplasm within the nucleus, cytoplasm within the cell outside the nucleus and the remaining space is cytoplasma. Together cytoplasm and nucleoplasm is called as protoplasm that is within the, uh, the cell. Clear? So protoplasm is a jelly-like semi-fluid substance which is present. Now talking about cell membrane. It is also called as plasma membrane. The most important thing is it is thin 
it is selectively permeable that means it allows specific things to move inside the cell it has a thickness of 7 to 10 nanometers seen under my, uh, electron microscope it is made up of lipids and proteins by structure uh, has semi fluid uh, content which binds the cell and uh, gives cell a definite shape the next is the nucleus uh, cell wall in the case of plants Cell, uh, cell wall is not present in animals. So cell wall is the outer covering which is seen only in the plants made up of cellulose. Uh, and the most important thing and difference between cell wall and cell membrane is cell membrane is selectively permeable. Cell wall is fully permeable. That means it allows free entry and exit and movement of substances within the cell. The next is nucleus. Now nucleus is a small spherical or ovoid shaped structure. And this was discovered by Robert Brown. Important to note Robert Hooke discovered the cell. Robert Brown discovered the nucleus. Discovery of nucleus was done in 1831. Nucleus is a double membrane structure. The nuclear membrane is a double membrane structure which has the outer membrane as well as the inner membrane. The uh, membrane has small nuclear pores and these nuclear pores are responsible for exchange between the cytoplasma and the nucleus. Nucleoplasma is also known as the nuclear sap which is the material that is within the uh, nucleus. Within the nucleus there is a so this sorry within the nucleus there is again a small structure which is known as nucleolus. Uh, so this is the nucleus sorry i was marking incorrectly on the vacuum okay so uh, this is a plant cell so this is a nucleus this is the nuclear membrane and within the nuclear membrane is the nuclear sap and here is nucleolus nucleolus is a dense rounded material which has large amount of rna hereditary information and it is also responsible for the protein synthesis then there are fibers which are present in the nucleus and these are uh, in the form of structures which is chromosome and chromosomes are the DNA material, has the DNA on it, which is the unit of hereditary information. In human beings, there are 23 pairs of chromosome which are seen. The structure of chromosome is important and the structure of chromosome together here is seen in the chromatin fibers. The next is the four important cell organelles which we will discuss here in the next again so the one is vacuole the outermost layer of the vacuole the membrane of the vacuole is important it is called a stonoplast then there is a central vacuole and the cell, sla cell sap it is filled with water uh, sugar and mineral uh, the most important thing is in plant the vacuole is large in this animals it is small and separated uh, the functions of vacuole is important. It helps to keep the cell target, stores the food material if required, also helps in digestion and water balance of the cell. The next is chloroplast. Now plastids are seen only in the case of uh, plants. Plastids could be chloroplast, chromoplast and leucoplast. Chloroplast have chlorophyll. Chromoplasts are responsible for yellow, red, orange color found in the petals. Uh, xanthophyll is seen for yellow color. Carot uh, carotene is seen for red, orange color. Leucoplasts do not have color. They are col colorless, but their use is to store starch, uh, potato tuber, uh, maize grains, um, rice grains are some examples where leucoplast is seen. Chloroplast, coming on to chloroplast, it is important. Chloroplast has chlorophyll. It has the outer membrane and the inner membrane. Between the two, there is intermembrane space. There is a stroma, which is the aqueous liquid, and grana, which are the stacks of thylakoids formed together. The thylakoids are connected together with the lamella, and within the thylakoids, the inner material is what is called as lumen. Now, this is very, very important. Uh, chloroplasts are one of the most important um, part of the plants responsible for the process of photosynthesis. Again, this is a double membrane structure. As we say, see here, there is an outer membrane and an inner membrane as well. So a double membrane structure, another very, very important question. The next is it uh, um, the mitochondria. Now, mitochondria is known as the powerhouse of the cell. Mitochondria again has an outer membrane and the inner membrane. As you can see, the outer membrane is a smooth. The inner membrane has the, the moves that are seen that are known as 
cystri and the point where they unite is known as the cystri junction oxidation of the food to produce atp is seen in the mitochondria and therefore it is called as powerhouse of the cell it is responsible for providing energy to the cell the next is endoplasmic reticulum endoplasmic reticulum is the network uh, of the membrane connecting plasma membrane to the nuclear membrane and here there are two ends one is the rough endoplasmic reticulum the other is the smooth endoplasmic reticulum on the rough endoplasmic reticulum we can see ribosomes lying on the rough endoplasmic reticulum however the smooth endoplasmic reticulum is without ribosome ribosomes are the site for protein synthesis the next is ribosome the structure of the ribosomes there are two units 70s and 80s the composition of those units is beyond the syllabus so we don't we won't dive into it so one is the larger unit as you can see the other is the smaller unit these ribosomes as we said are the sites for protein synthesis they are also called as the protein factory of the cell the next is centrosomes now centrosomes are seen exclusively in the case of animal cell uh, they are near the nucleus in the cytoplasma as you can see the structure they are pillar shaped structures attached together so they have the distal ends and the proximal ends proximal ends have the interconnecting fiber the distal ends have the microtubule uh, microtubule triplets which are seen and this is responsible for spindle uh, formation during the cell division and the basal bodies of cilia as well as flagella develop from the centrioles itself so centriole is a very important uh, part which is responsible and important in the process of cell division and here during the cell division the cells migrate to the opposite poles in the process of meiosis and mitosis the next is the Uh, another important structure that we would understand and that is the golgi complex now golgi complex is also known as golgi apparatus as you can see there is the cis phase and the trans phase so cis phase has the depression that is seen and the other phase is known as the trans phase this was discovered by camillo golgi and therefore called as golgi complex it is a special plus part of endoplasmic reticulum and is responsible for cell secretions the next is lysosome lysosomes are called as the suicidal bags as you can see there is a membrane structure outside and hydrolytic enzymes which are present it is only seen in the animal cells it is spherical in shape has digestive enzymes and destroys the bacteria so any harmful product which enters into the body is destroyed by the means of lysosome any worn out dead cells are again destroyed by the lysosomes and therefore it has a capability to digest and it has a capability for intracellular digestion also called as the suicidal bag of the cell so uh, uh, the another important function of golgi bodies here is it helps in the secretion of enzymes mucus and various hormones uh, golgi bodies is also responsible for formation of lysosome so we understood lysosome only after golgi apparatus because of the Uh, golgi body also has an important role in uh, formation of cell plate that happens during the process of cell division in plant so here are some of the important organelles that we have discussed in the cell cell is a very basic chapter we have uh, we have not gone into very significant details of cell uh, in this section but a complete overview to help you understand the various cell organelles the basic structure of the cell which includes the cell membrane the protoplasma and the nucleus the protoplasma includes the cytoplasma as well as the nucleoplasma so this was uh, one of the very basic concepts that we have discussed in case you have any questions or doubts feel free to post those in the comment section wish you good luck